My name is Adrian Nanchev, and this channel is all about helping you become a remarkable entrepreneur. So today, I'm joined with Ryan Bidulph. So please, Ryan, if I got the name right, please tell us what you do, tell us what your story is, and tell us how you're making a difference in the world. Sure. Number one, uh, thank you so much, Adrian. Number two, you got the name perfectly right. Thank you very <laughs> And number much. three, sure, sure. I am a former fired security guard turned island hopping pro blogger. About nine years ago, I got the ax as a security guard, really, really running in some difficult times in my life, uh, broke, just didn't know where to look next. And my then girlfriend, now wife Kelly, told me about making money online. And it was a totally new idea to me. So I hopped into blogging. I struggled for a while, had a really, really tough time like so many bloggers have. But eventually I found my footing. And then a couple of years back, after I was a full-time pro blogger, I created a site called Blogging from Paradise, and that's where things really took off. And I help people build their blogs with smart blogging tips, but particularly with the blog, I saw the need for so many travel bloggers. I'd been circling the globe for a couple of years, and they, when I met them, they really weren't doing that well with their with well with their blogs. They were doing it part time. They'd have to come back home and work a part time job. Maybe they didn't want to work. So I decided to just help them become full-time island-hopping pro bloggers. I saw the need there, so I taught them how to monetize and build up their followings. So that was really the basis of blogging from paradise and what I'm doing now. And ever since I hopped on that creative idea, things have really expanded for me. So it's more now about me expiring folks who are really having a difficult time in their lives with their blogs or even if they want to set up a, maybe a more fun, freeing lifestyle. That's kind of what I'm doing. That's pretty cool. That's cool. But I'm curious, when you say island hopping, which exact islands are you hopping between? Sure, sure. Um, I've been to, I think, about 20 countries with some of the island hopping places. I lived in Fiji for four months a couple of years ago. I've been to Bali about six times. I've lived there a year collectively. Phuket in Thailand. Hmm, Cyprus in Europe. So these are a few of the islands. Koh Lanta in Thailand as well, where I've been doing some island hopping. And a lot of it, too, is more about living in the tropics, Adrian, because I've spent my six-year round-the-world trip. I've been circling the globe. I've spent about four of those years in Southeast Asia. So that's mm -hmm. kind of been the field behind blogging from Paradise, spending a lot of time in the tropics because it's what we really enjoy doing, me and my wife. Is that, is that where you are right now? Actually, excuse me, I am in the exotic locale known as New Jersey. New Jersey, <laughs> which right. Is, yeah, yeah, which is my home. We're back in the state for a bit, just visiting with family. So usually come back for a little more recently, but usually like about a month a year to kind of see everybody and then uh, and then usually off again to the tropics. So that's all over the all over the world, and that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. But what, when, you, when it comes to your blogging, what do you exactly blog about? Is it purely just helping people become bloggers themselves, or do you blog about a specific topic or trend that you specifically like? Sure. I talk about smart blogging tips. So it's like building your blog based on the fundamentals of creating and connecting and then also integrating the mindset work, which is so important because I think so many bloggers, they dive into the game and they're using these practical tips and then they fall into the crowd of like 81% of bloggers that never make more than $100 online during their entire career. And I'm thinking, okay, what could I add to the mix in addition to my fun travel stories, which I work into and I draw analogies between the two. But it's just teaching people how to build successful blogs based on the fundamentals, getting your mindset down, doing the creating and the connecting so you too can build something that's a community that's really fun and enjoyable, but that can also help you make a full-time career out of blogging so you could become a pro blogger as well. So it's really geared towards bloggers who just want to build successful blogs so what so what are the, what are the fundamentals then really it's create connect first off the, the the fundamental of fundamentals which literally almost all bloggers skip you have to have that intent where you're having fun and you're doing free freeing things regularly and that's really where it all starts adrian it's enjoying blogging. So many people get online, they're like, I want to make some money out of this. I want to get some traffic. I want to be well known. They're all in that getting energy. They want to get, but they don't want to give. And mm -hmm. that's why they struggle. So that's the foundation. Then from there, it's create, connect, create, connect. There's different platforms through which you can create and through which you can connect with other people. But so much of it is just practicing your skills, becoming a better writer, 
or video marketer, if you're going to do that through your blog, a lot of, of blogging. And then the connecting is all about promoting other people and taking a genuine interest in them, commenting on their blogs, tweeting them, featuring them on your blog. And then this builds the friendships, which help you really rock it out because the folks that are really connected, they built the friendships one-to-one over a course of months and then years. And any of my successes flowed to me through my friends, you know, influential bloggers, quote unquote, big dog bloggers. But I befriended these guys over a long time. So, so these are some of the basic fundamentals that have worked for me and have worked for so many folks, so many of my readers. And I'm just spreading the word to kind of bring the word, the, the, the energy up in the blogosphere. So people are enjoying the ride, having fun, being generous and building the, the life of their dreams. Yeah. Um, back in October, to about 16, I discovered uh, inbound marketing. And there was a graph that talked about how if you blog or create content once a day for a month, this is how many people will come to your website. But if you do it consistently for two months, three months, four months, it's almost like a hockey curve. More and more people every month find your content and come to your website, and that's pure traffic. That's traffic that people that would have consumed your content and, in theory, be more qualified for the kind of people that you want on your website and buy your stuff. Exactly. Exactly. It's exponential. You talk about the hockey game. It, it becomes exponential over time. Yeah. If you love your craft and you keep creating, and then you're creating another blog, so maybe doing some guest posting, you're leaving thoughtful comments on blogs. It's People see you as being all over the place. Then they see you as an authority. They really know their stuff. And like I say, when you help them freemium, you're going to get the premium. And that means when you're helping people for free, they buy into your advice. They're like, oh, he really knows what he's doing. So then when I send out one of my 126 ebooks through a newsletter or through my blog, they're like, oh, I love his networking advice. Boom. I'm going to buy the ebook. I'm going to buy the ebook or I'm going to buy his course. And then this is how you build this full time income through it. You help people for free. You put the content out there persistently. You make friends patiently, patiently, patiently. And you got to really enjoy it because if not, then you're going to get frustrated. You're going to want to quit left and right. That's where this exponential effect builds over months and then over years if you really want to want to rock it out when you're doing this for years from the right energy then everything really starts to come together yeah oh i got so much to say now um yeah the two when it comes to business or entrepreneurship i find there's two rules you got to be happy and competent with what you're doing if you're not happy an emotional requirement if you're not happy you'll be stressed out you won't enjoy your time you'll be demotivated and if you're not competent you're not going to see the res- the results. You're not going to see the fruits of your labor. You're not going to get rewarded for all this time and energy you put in. So if you're not happy and competent to do what you're doing, then you're going to quit. 100%. Yeah, it's been my experience. You get the energy right, and then you practice. You learn a skill. You're competent. Skill. Study. Blogging is a skill, like any skill in life. You study. You learn. You put your knowledge into practice. You test. You tweak. And you keep your energy right. You're still enjoying the ride. And that's where everything comes together. So I love that one-two punch. It really works for me, Adrian. Happy and competence. I'll keep it in mind. <laughs> Thank you very much. There's, there's a few other things as well, but they go a little off tangent from blogging. But speaking of book, you mentioned the book. I'm planning on writing in August, depending on schedule, uh, my second official book to do with grabbing attention. I'm thinking of calling it Avalan- Attention Avalanche, where essentially I'm creating content, essentially how to blog, content marketing slash inbound marketing, Every piece of content you create, I've come to realize, has got to pass what I call the so what test. Everything you put out there, why should the person who's reading it, the consumer, why should they care? Why should they give a damn about this specific topic or that topic or this blog or this podcast, depending on the title or who's involved or what it's all about? Why is it relevant to them? And if they don't care, if it doesn't pass the so what test, yeah, so what? They're not going to consume. They're not going to read. They're not going to bother subscribing. They're going to overlook you and, and go to someone else because you, ultimately you're, com- you're competing with everyone else. On Instagram, on YouTube, on Facebook, you're competing with everyone else. And if you can't find that so what, if you can't pass that so what test, they're going to overlook you and forget all about you. Yeah, this is so key, Adrian. It's it's I call it the the I know it's gonna sound the, the the double P test, I'll say. It's about your passion as you solve a problem. So you link your passionate energy 
that just makes you shine so brightly where you're you're just there. There's just energy behind your work, and then you have to link it to a pressing problem, and then you know people will care. And I do that by just by listening to my readers, sending an email out to my list. If you don't have a, a readership yet, if you're not even you're not even blogging yet, check the top blogs in your niche. What are they talking about? What are people struggling with? That you know you'll pass the so what test because these people are pain. They'll tune in. They really will. But then that passion is the thing that really because there's a lot of problem solvers out there and they're solving problems. They're doing a pretty good job, but they just feel like they're stuck. The energy, the clarity, the love and the happiness you talk about when you could add that, lend that energy to the solution and let it bleed through your blog and brand. That's where people really care so much where they'll be waiting to check their email for your latest post and they'll be begging for it. That's how you get rabid fans. Yeah. You, 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 I think it's you, you make them thankful to sell to them or thankful for creating the content. And you you do that through just guilt tripping them, quote unquote, guilt tripping them where you give, 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 you share, you create so much, you create and connect. And that it's just reciprocity. The more you give for them, the more you do for them, the more they're willing to do for you. Exactly. Exactly. And it's so true. And I've seen it with so many successful bloggers. I was at Affiliate Summit East uh, last night in New York City, and I'm up there talking with John Chow and my friend Zach Johnson, Saeed Balki, John Rampton. These are the biggest names in blogging. These guys are like seven, eight figure. It's just they're so successful, and it's just this generosity. They were the kings of giving for, in some cases, decades, and they kept giving, giving, giving. And then over time, they're creating, they're connecting. That, like you said, the guilting people just buy. They're like, man, I've got so much free stuff. I got to eventually buy something. And then they just buy and they buy. And then it becomes, they don't even think about the money. They don't think about the means of exchange. They're like, I need this. And I love this guy. And I believe in him. So it's just the subconscious thing where they buy. And you prosper. You're rendering awesome service. And they're getting what they want. And then you see how it builds into something that's profitable. Yeah. And speaking of Connect, that's also why I decided to start a podcast. Because about a week ago, I heard that it's a good way to build connections and, and uh, market and expand that you know that network. And it was like, hey, I got the, the know-how, got the hardware, got the software. That's a good idea. Let's get started. And then, you know, we're on episode, what are we on now? Episode six? This, episode six this is. So, wow, in less, than, less than a week. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, hit the ground running. You like the idea. And that's why uh, that's why it's working out for you so much and just how you're you're having fun with it and, and you hit the ground running. And that's that's an awesome mindset to have. So good for you. I know it will continue to expand success wise. That's great. Thank you. Thank you very much. But going back a bit, you mentioned some names uh, while you were um, away somewhere. What were those names again, please? Sure, sure. These are. I was at a conference in New York City yesterday. Some of the names were John Chow. He's one of the top bloggers, or pretty much the top blogger online when it comes to like making money online niche. Also, Zach Johnson, who's a personal friend of mine from New Jersey. He's been online for the past 20 years, runs blogging.org, bloggingtips.com, also zachjohnson.com, and he's he's one of the top blogging tips bloggers and affiliate marketers in the world, blogging-wise. And also Syed Balki, who's, I believe, the owner and creator of WP Beginner. And John Rampton, who's on all types of uh, big media outlets, Forbes, Entrepreneur. He has his own blog as well, but he runs everything through, these, uh, through syndication, through these top sites around the world. And they're all hyper-successful bloggers, a few of which I know personally, who I attended. Uh, they had a talk yesterday at this conference in New York. So I just attended it and taking notes. It's a lot of stuff that I've put into practice, but it, it helps to fortify things as I work my way up in the, in the blogosphere and increase my exposure and help more folks just to, again, Adrian, it's sticking to the fundamentals. And I think it's something we try to outfox ourselves. And you see these guys that have such immense success, 17 years, 20 years, 16 years, 13 years, and they stick to it from day one. And when you do that over six months, let alone a year, let alone 15 Forget about it. It's it's just it's a matter of time and energy and persistence. So I think those would be some awesome folks if you're into blogging and you really want to learn from some of the top pros out there. Take these names down, visit visit their blogs, and send them an email. You know, connect with them, build that bond, build those friendships because these folks will take you to places when you befriend them and work on your skills that you could never reach on your own. 
Yeah, you never know what's going to happen if you just message people. Worst thing they can do is say no or exactly. not, not reply. So whatever, just move on to the next person. Contact someone else. Contact exactly. someone else. So exactly. I'm, I'm just curious then, what kind of basic, what kind of fundamentals do you advise for blogging then? So create and connect is number one. Sure. That's really the, the core action fundamental. Of course, the, more than anything, really falling in love with what you're doing. Or I shouldn't say that. Actually, whatever you could talk about all day long, you want to blog about it. That's your blog topic. And, of course, tie that to some pressing problem in the niche. Beyond that, Adrian, I'm really big on a few different fundamentals practically. Writing maybe a blog post a week, maybe two blog posts a week, but making them a little beefier. A thousand words. Solve some pressing problem. Ask your readers. Check top blogs in your niche for problems within the niche and then solve it through your blog post. So if me being a blogging tips blogger, I have a pretty good idea because I have a big following. So I ask them or I see the problems they bring to me through my comments. But if you're a new blogger, you may check problogger.net or bloggingtips.com. Or I guess post a lot and you'll see what people are talking about. Now, when you're creating this blog post, what you want to do is not be obsessed with SEO. You might pop mm-hmm. in a keyword here or there, but add your story to it. Share your story, maybe your struggles, maybe your victory. If you don't have any yet, you could just say, hey, I learned it from this guy, and then link into another top blogger, and that's another way to build a friendship and also to add the authenticity to your post. But that would be it for kind of creating the post, solve the problem, add a story, which makes it yours, which makes it unique, which makes you stand out. And then practically two fundamentals I love for the connecting part and also creating guest posting on top blogs in your niche and commenting on blogs effectively. Maybe a one, two, three paragraph comment on a top blog from your niche, address the fellow blogger by name, and this just helps you build friendships, as well as maybe tweeting the post, sharing it on Facebook, because that idea of generosity, it just opens so many doors. And these are a few of the core things I do every day, helping people, promoting others, sharing my insights that really make things pop and have made them pop with my blog, Blogging from Paradise, and any other blogs I've owned in the past, and just it's worked so well for so many connected, established professional bloggers. When I was looking into inbound marketing last year, I did I looked at some numbers and I heard or read even that a blog that's between two thousand two hundred and two thousand five hundred words gets the optimum amount of shares and the optimum amount of credibility and authority. What do you think to that? Because you mentioned a thousand. That's based on studies, but I've found something, Adrian, that's it's really tripped up a lot of folks. They look at studies like I don't I understand that it's outside in thinking. It's like, okay, this is what's proven, what we've seen, and you want to work off of that. The problem I have with that is you have so many new bloggers or even established bloggers whose sweet spot is a thousand who would find their niche at a thousand to fifteen hundred, then they try to string them out. Just 2,000 words and 25 because that's what's most successful, and that's where the energetic divergence happens. Like they were happy, and they were clear, and they would have found their tribe and found their following at 1,000 words, 1,500 maybe, and then they start stretching it out, and it, the happiness goes to tension, and then boom, they're screwed. And this is why almost all bloggers fail. As I say, this guy says it. You have to do it this way, and that's never the case because there's 7 billion human beings, and we all have our own school of thought. So I would say don't – and it feels really good to you and fun, like for someone like Neil Patel – or someone like Brian Dean, these awesome rocking SEO bloggers who just you know live according to that, they enjoy it, so definitely do it. But if it feels like an endless struggle and you feel like you're stretching it out, don't look at the word count when you start thinking, okay, a thousand's pretty beefy, that works pretty well. Once you start working your way up and you find yourself adding words, you're taking weeks to publish the post, you're obviously you're moving from what made you happy and what was fun and enjoyable and what was beneficial towards tension. And this is why I say if you don't have your energy right, don't bother because I struggled for a good six years online, really four to five, moving from what would have helped me build a really rocking niche eight years ago or nine years ago towards the tension. So I would say if you love doing it, go for 2,000, 2,500 words. If not, you could do 1,000, you could do 1,500 and really enjoy it, and you do want to at least reach that point. And you'll find your tribe and you'll have maximum shares. And I mean, some of my blog posts get 130 comments, thousands of social shares. Um, it's, I got, you know, pretty decent traction and, and a pretty loyal tribe, 60,000, no, 52,000 followers on Twitter and a lot of engagement. 
and I break quote unquote many rules. I stick to some fundamentals, but outcomes wise, stat wise, I break many rules. And when you're happy doing what you're doing, your tribe, as you're reaching out and connecting with people, they find you and they appreciate your delivery. So that's, that's why the energy is a one key. And then from there you follow the practical steps that resonate the most with you. Yeah. That's what I imagined with that uh, study. I took it with a pinch of salt because there's no point in just stretching your content out, getting 2000 for the sake of getting 2000. I find that if 100 works or 500 works or 50 works, that's fine. But I'm also, I'm more, I'm more visual. I'm more of a video person as opposed to writing. I can do a video for 10, 15, 20 minutes and talk about the thing in exact detail as opposed to, I find that easier and a little bit quicker than writing it all out. Yeah. You know what, Adrian, this is like the biggest, that it's a great problem to have uh, of mine, but I enjoy writing and video and audio so much just expressing myself and I kind of have that energy where I've, I've worked on it by releasing my fears and my terror and all this other stuff and doors coming from this place of passion and it's like a pure intent. It's not entirely pure. I'm not purely altruistic. I, I receive paycheck, you know, I, I still like, you know, getting, but I, I just, I love doing each. I could be on Periscope for an hour and a half. I could, I have to cut my live videos off on Facebook and Periscope at 30 minutes and people are just eating it up because I love writing. I mean, I went through a stretch where I was writing and self-publishing a bite-sized 6,000-word ebook every single day for three months in a row. I published 90, self-published, and it's like I love it all so much. So I definitely hear you on both vein, you know, in both areas. I love the writing and the video, and that's where that passion really, really comes through. And I can feel it as we're chatting. It's, it's just authentic. It's natural. It's something you enjoy, and that's why that's so important because that's where that amplification happens. That's when you notice people more. That's when people develop their name and – and you're just you're clear on it, and then from there you're following the practical tips to build things. Of course, you're going to be acting, but um, but yeah, no, I I hear you in that, and then I hear you with writing too. I have to wrap up my posts at fifteen hundred because I'd be there writing a six thousand word post. Yeah, I've also heard that uh, long form content generally is better because my, my my philosophy is the longer the content is, if people consume all of it, that's good also for the YouTube algorithm, but also. Yeah. It's much more, much more engaged, much more likely to build a connection if someone watches 20 minutes of me as opposed to watching just five minutes of the same video. I've seen the same thing. Yeah, with my YouTube and I'm just, it's nascent. I'm just building. I've had a lot of videos out there, but I haven't even touched them. And I, I have my fingers and my hands rather in a lot of different areas. But in the same regard, I've seen that with my YouTube. Like I would take a Facebook live video that's 30 minutes download it from uh, from Facebook to my Chromebook and then upload to YouTube. And you'd see that even if it's a couple different views, if someone sticks around and they do for 25 minutes or a half hour, <clears throat> that adds it to the total uh, amount of time that someone's viewing my videos. And like you said, it's great for the YouTube algorithm. And I notice I'm getting more views and I'm getting more exposure and more comments. And I have a lot of videos up there a lot from old school when I was just putting whatever was out there, <laughs> but, but I've seen the same thing. And I think it does make sense because if you can go longer form and you're enjoying it, it's going to engage fans and keep their uh, eyes on your content for these longer periods of time. And there's greater engagement. You're making greater impact. So if you feel it, go with the 10, 15 minute, 20 minute long video, not to stretch it out. Like we said before, but you're enjoying it. So then run with it. If you feel like a couple hundred words for writing a post. Oh, that's maybe a little too yeah, write a thousand words, write 1200. It feels good. Let it flow. They're sitting there reading it. Even if they're scanning it, they might leave a comment. They'll be on your site. And of course that takes down your bounce rate too, which is awesome for SEO, but you're doing it from that right energetic space where it's fun. And that's what increases that engagement. And the chief benefit is you're building a connection with another human being, but then those icing on the cake, cherry on top deals are the awesome, you know, algorithm boost you'll get as well. Yeah, and it seems to be that YouTube, well, the bigger you are, the more, the better service YouTube gives you with the algorithm. So it really, it really is success begets success. Mm, so true. So true. Blogging wise too with like Google, I don't even focus on SEO at all. I got one post and, and it's just, I've found this, that you're just on the blog and you're putting your content out there and I'm getting more search traffic without even focusing on it at all. Two blog posts I did. I, I got page one for a week for how to rank 
on page one of Google. I don't know if it gets more competitive than that. And also how to submit a guest post. I was on page one, result three for about a week, almost a little over a year ago. And after that, I just focused a little bit, not heavily. And since then I have it and I keep getting Google traffic. They give me love because I have crazy social signals. I got a lot of social sharing, a lot of comments, a lot of links in from guest posting, but it's just all that generosity and the service and helping people and doing it over time that that's what Google rewards. That's what they always wanted to reward. But in the 90s and especially early 2000s, there was just silly black cat stuff going on. But now it's like there it's almost like the less you focus on SEO and the more you focus on serving people and being being helpful and authentic and creating across a wide range of platforms and being social. You're just going to rank well on Google because it's come full circle. And now it's it's about creating, connecting, having fun and doing the right things, and you're going to get the love from them without even trying to as much. And same deal, like you said, with YouTube. Yeah, well, a lot, a lot of notes. SEO, yeah, I don't bother with that. I What I tend to do instead, you know the long tail and short head short tail theory idea? Yes. What I say to that is, don't worry too much about SEO. What you do instead is go on scale, en masse, thousands and thousands of micro searches, niche, not too, not too fond of that phrase, but monopoly on certain keywords, certain phrases that, that are all to do with you and what you talk about in your spectrum, in your within your niche. And just go all in on every relevant keyword and phrase and topic around one specific answer on everything that's long tail. And just through this sheer scale of being specific in loads of different areas that will grant you good SEO and good traction and good discoverability. So I wouldn't read too much about SEO because it's like you, you'll get it if you create the content in the right way with the correct kind of keywords and the right kind of setup and a few of the layout patterns, you'll get it automatically. But what's more important, however, than SEO is to have followers, to have actual eyeballs that are anticipating and waiting for the next blog, the next video. So when you get a notification with an email or in general people stop what they're doing and go straight to that video. I just got a notification right now on my phone for a YouTube video that's uploaded. And that up oh, that notification, that notification totally bypassed SEO. Totally went right around, you know, being discovered on YouTube where it's just like I subscribed already and I get a notification and then when you do that on scale, you go right you just bypass SEO completely. Exactly. It's all it's all this idea. And I love that 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 strategy you have with the smaller, longer tail and just doing it through scale. It's it's this idea that I talk about a lot. Instead of trying to get a viral video or a viral blog post, patiently build a viral online presence. And that means you're not through some type of desperate hustle or stressful trying to be everywhere. You're just creating this meaningful, helpful stuff scaling it across different platforms, you know, different long tail keywords. And then you appear to be everywhere. You're not, but I get mm -hmm. that so much. Like the other day I was on, I think it was steam it. And somebody mentioned, Hey, is this Ryan Biddle from Quora and the warrior forum? And I just nodded and I'm like, Oh, okay. This is kind of, and I get it a lot. You know, people send me emails. God, I see you everywhere on Instagram. One guy said, he's like, you're just through blog comments, let alone your guest posts. He's like, I see you on eight of 10 blogs. I read. He's like from Indian blogs, to Nigerian blogs, to all these top American blogs. He's like, that how do you, and it's just, this is it. It's the scale. It's service, help. And like you say, when you get that Instagram or the uh, YouTube notification, really any network, somebody joins your email list, that totally circumvents the whole SEO thing. And you have someone, no matter what Google does, as far as their algorithm changes and all these updates that wipe out folks that rely and attach so heavily on this search idea that's so fickle, you have that person on your email list on your, you know, they're subscribed to your YouTube channel and they're there as long as you do what you value and they still resonate with that. And they will, if they're loving your message, that's how you build that sustainable, viable, long-term business through any channel, you know, blogging, especially because you own the real estate. That's why I'm so big on, you have to go with the domain and hosting because you own it. And as long as you keep doing what you're doing and build your email list, do what you value. That will continue to expand no matter what Facebook does, no matter what Google does, because those people, they'll always check their email. Email ain't going out of style in our lifetimes. They'll always check their email. They're on your list. Or even if they bookmark your blog, as long as you keep paying the domain and hosting, sharing the value, that'll keep growing and expanding independent of social media algo changes and then also search algo changes, which is just, that's why I preach it and why so many successful bloggers do too. You could really connect with people through these channels 
but don't make them your primary means because you don't own them, but you do own your self-hosted WordPress platform. Make that home base and then build out of there, you know, YouTube. You could do it through iTunes with your podcast or through, or through SoundCloud or whatever whatever channels you choose. Yeah, the off, um, yeah, having the domain is important, yeah, but also at the same time I think it's it's damn good strategy to be seen on all platforms as well, like you mentioned exactly. just now. Yeah, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and who knows where else. Steam it. I think Steam it's up and rising. I think there's a lot of um, a lot of underpriced, under undervalued attention to be got right there. Two hundred or so thousand people just keep commenting in certain categories, and that will generate the momentum over time. I think Steam exactly. has a lot, of, a lot of potential. Almost, almost like Reddit 2.0 maybe with a few other things. But I think the user interface needs to change a lot. But again, a little off topic. Um, one one idea I had, I want your thoughts on this, that I, I do for my blog, is I always have a question of the day. A uh, question of the day that's relevant to the topic at hand, the video or blog, but I'm asking people, you know, how are they doing this, or how are they, you know, how is it relevant to them, encouraging them to sh- encouraging them to comment, but also then I'm answering it during the video as well, and that way it shows more about who I am and more about what I'm doing, because here's the, here's the conversation, is the topic, Here's the question, but then here's how I am applying the said lesson or said that said topic. What do you think to that? No, I love the idea. I love the idea. I end most of my blog posts with three to four questions related to the blog post itself, probing if people are struggling in that area, if they've had success, what do they have to share? And that shows your take on things, how you're answering it through your comments, through a video on YouTube, through whatever channel whoever medium through a podcast. So it shows your take, you're, you're building insight, but more than that, even you're building a community, you're building a tribe. It's like Seth uh, Godin talks about building tribes. This is what happens. You connect with people, you ask a question. And I do that quite a bit on my Facebook. You guys struggling with anything, anybody want me to write a blog post for them, whatever it is. And that boosts engagement between hum- two human beings, ask a question, they answer. Maybe it goes back and forth, a little bit of a volley. And that's where the connections build that's where you make friends that's where you get followers loyal fans you know rabid minions it's just it becomes something where it's such a beautiful thing because you see this idea of connectedness happen and then as that tribe grows and you're serving more and more folks and they're gaining uh, more loyalty and they're just becoming more connected to you that's where this this online business this blogging bit that's where it just expands to these awesome awesome places and i Adrian, the tribe that I've built, they have helped me live a life that I could not have dreamed of. I didn't dream of this. I had no idea. I had no idea this would be possible circling the globe and being an Amazon, you know, best selling author for some of these ebooks. And how did I even know anything? I didn't know SEO from CEO 10 years ago. I didn't know what a blog was. I try to explain to people 10 years ago, I did not know what a blog was. I knew how to check ESPN.com in my email. That's all. So now work where I'm at from the help of my tribe and learning and having that vision and the engagement. And like you said, that question, ask questions, provide answers, ask, 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 and you'll build those bonds. You'll create content. You'll show people your insight. And then from there, more trust builds and so many magical things happen with your blog through this simple action of asking questions and answering through engagement. Yeah, uh, trust. To be known, liked, and trusted. Trust is a very valuable commodity these days. You don't, you don't want to take it for granted. You want to build it and build it and build it and earn it and earn it and earn it. You, it's once you, once you get that, once you get trust, I I feel you can sell anything. Then you mentioned these books you've been writing. I wrote a few books. I wrote quite a few books actually at the start of this year on just on marketing. Uh, but the, the big mistake I had was that I had no one to sell it to. No one knew me. No, no one trusted me. So I had all these products. I opened open business, but no one knew I existed. Yeah, you know what? I'm slowly building. To tell you the truth, for the longest time, I was in the same boat because my first few sold pretty well, but they're all bite sized. And I gained this end inspiration. I had seen these problems people were having. I kind of went off niche a little bit because I have some wild travel stories to share and really wacky things that have happened on the road. And people wanted to live vicariously through me. A lot of my Followers are just, they want to live in their hometown. They don't want to island hop, but they want to build a successful blog. So I'm slowly learning now, and I've seen more and more sales that the networking 
the sharing, the guest posting, however it is that you're scaling and getting off your site, off your blog, being present on these different networks, that's a big part of it because you do want to have folks to to sell it to, to serve. And with me having so many eBooks, I'm not going to wait around a year to do a release. You know, I don't, I hope I live that long, but, but you know, every couple of weeks for me because they're bite sized and they're quick. And I release it through my blog. And rather than his monstrous bliss, it's just this idea that James Altucher shares. He's like the best way to promote your first, your current ebook is to write the next one. So it's not a mad dash, but it's like it's being abundant and putting the ebooks out there and then continuing to connect with people and promoting others and building up that loyal following. And that's where you release the ebooks, you wrote them or the books. Then you have the folks who love your free content and they will buy the premium. And when the trust is there, it's just, there's no thought. It's automatic. And, and, and the dollar amount doesn't even matter as much as we think when people buy in because they don't see dollars. They see their their favorite blog or their favorite video market or their favorite self-published author or published author releasing something that's so helpful for them. So they buy it. And it's, you know, four dollars, three ninety nine or three hundred fifty for my course or a hundred for another course or consulting. It's just they they buy it. They don't even think about it. And we do that ourselves so much with stuff we love offline, online. It's like, yeah, we. We want food, you know, it's something or whatever it is or something we really enjoy. We just we buy it. And that's just how it is. And people are like that with us as we keep sharing, you know, creating the content and creating the premium content, but then also building our networks through promoting others and whatever channels we use to really build those bonds that help us expand our reach and uh, help our market expand as well. Yeah, the way I see it is that you want to create more than you consume. Constantly mm-hmm. create more content, or well, no matter what format, than you consume elsewhere. But I'm also just very curious. You mentioned these bite-sized books. How are you going about creating them? Because with with um, Amazon Kindle, there's a minimum of like 24 pages. Yes. Yeah, they all fit within the 30 to 45 minute reads. All of them are minimum 6,000 words. If you go up to 15,000 words, I've sold a few on Sells as well, which is uh, another digital storefront. Only two. 124 on Amazon. I haven't created any more, Adrian, because I <clears throat> I wrote a 90 plus during that three month stretch when I lived in Bali. Uh, f- wow, three years ago, and I've just been promoting ever since. So it's more about my readers wanted number one. Intuitively, I felt that I wanted to write those 6,000 word bite sized ebooks. It felt right. It felt fun, and my readers just wanted a long form pillar style post in ebook form. And a lot of pillar style posts or pillar style posts are maybe 5,000, 6,000, 8,000 words compared to the traditional 600 word, you know, quick and dirty blog post. So they're like, listen, I want this intuitively. I felt it. And then they're telling me I want this long form post, but an ebook in Kindle format. So I could read it on my Kindle or on the beach or whatever, wherever you're at. So then I just ran with it. So it's I hit the 30 to 45 minute category. And the way I look at it, too, at least for blogging tip stuff or for entertaining travel stories, it's perfect for me because my readers don't want the next war and peace. They don't want 50,000, 100,000 words. And that's my readership. They don't want anything. They don't want to sit there on their Kindle and electronic device and and read that much. They want to read something in and out 30, 45 minutes, get some blogging tips, get a a funny travel story, maybe some inspirational advice I have to share from all my travels and all the stuff I've experienced and been through on my journey. And that's it. That works for them. So boom, three ninety nine. dollars don't even think about it. And I just, I spread the word because then they see that. And then at the end of my eBooks uh, and, and a number of them, I link to most of my other books, or of course, if they're just on Amazon, you know, people who bought this also purchased this. So they grab two, three, four, five eBooks and it's awesome for me because I'm inspiring folks. And then the, the icing on the cake is I received this means of exchange called money, which helps me uh, do what I do. So it's really cool. It really works for both parties. But all are 6000 minimum, which do hit the the Amazon uh, at the Kindle minimum. Ah, look into that because I wrote a few books, as I said, as I said earlier, in spring. Uh, there, was, there was no real strategy to them back then. And there was no audience either. It was just I have all this knowledge. I'll write a book on this, on that topic, on this topic, on that topic. Uh, abysmal sales, but now we're ch- turning that around and say, hey, now let's build a community. Let's build re- let's build, rep- uh, build reputation, build trust. Let's become known, liked, and trusted, and then find ways of, uh, of promoting those books to the community. But that's interesting. I want to look into that as well. No, definitely, definitely, because if you have the, when you have the community, it's so cool because you could even go off niche a little bit or off topic. Like some of the folks, they'll buy my travel experiences books or the one book that's like all my 
favorite travel photos. And it's just a photo ebook. And it has nothing to do, quote unquote, with blogging tips. But they, if they're community members, so so they buy it. They're like, man, it's awesome. I want to see the story behind the blog, see what else you're up to. And it's so interesting that you that you have knowledge in this area. So, yeah, once you have the community, Adrian, you build it, you know, patiently over time, then you'll be able to sell the books that are fully aligned with your niche. And then even if you go off niche or off topic, you'll sell more of those. And the blessing is, too, of when you, you know, maybe do a free giveaway here and there on Amazon. You have a tribe and they download a lot and you're getting moving up in the search rankings. I mean, Amazon's like the, the Google of digital storefronts. I mean, you have people from all over the world who find these things from different regions. And I, mean, I sell books in Japan, and I don't think I've ever connected with it that I'm aware of, maybe a, a lurker, you know, somebody in the background. But every every month when the royalty payments come in, the commissions, it's like I'm selling ebooks in Japan. And it's amazing. It's just such a beautiful platform for amplifying your message and inspiring folks. Yeah, that's awesome. And before we wrap this up, Ryan... I'm just very curious. I had a question, but I've forgotten it now. Um, that's all right. What are you, what, what's what's um, what are you up to now for the next year or so? What's the next plans for you? Really, I living this type of life, Adrian. I live so much in the moment. I really focus on now. So, really, ultimately, now it's all about and for the foreseeable future of spreading the word on my eBooks meeting more folks through guest posting, expanding more in the video area of things because I've really enjoyed it. I've, I thoroughly enjoyed doing the Facebook Live, a little bit of the YouTube Live, Periscope, just adding more authenticity to my brand and helping people get to know me. But more than anything, the ultimate intent is just to help as many folks as possible through as many channels build successful blogs and, and build the, the lives of their dreams. I, I, I went from where I was at, laid off, you know, fired security guard, to where I am now circling the globe. So really the, the prime driver that makes me do what I do is to share, to help, to be generous, to serve, and to, to love the ride as I have. So that's pretty much it for now and the foreseeable future. And uh, I remember my question now. It's um, what do you think about going off niche slightly? Wig- a bit of wiggle room. You mentioned a little bit about, little bit about traveling. But I'm going to say that it's fine to go off niche so long as you connect it that traveling topic subject back to what you were originally known for and what you originally love to do. Perfect. That's it. That's entirely it. Like I work in my travel stories and that's what people know me for and my brand for. And not every single post, but I'll talk about how, uh, you know, being attacked by two wild men in Kathmandu, Nepal, which did really happen to me, separate occasions where they attacked me. I, I tie that into blogging tips. So I'll talk about that and I'll lead off with that. But then I bring it in. So, yeah, you could go off niche. You can go off topic a little bit. Just always tie it back in. And obviously there's going to be the odd post here or there. Like when I'm married to my wife, Kelly, I put that out there for my community, and they, they loved it. They wanted to see that. They wanted to see the human side. You know, the I always share the human side through all my posts. But to have that little bit big off topic news or say when we were going to Qatar, I mean, such a fascinating country, Qatar, the, the wealthiest country in the world. So I kind of put a post out there for folks, you know, just to let them know that the lifestyle. But that's just you know, few and far between these posts. But other than that, yeah, tie it into your niche and you're okay. And, and I think people appreciate that, the analogies and, and the, the interest of it. So it's, it's fine to do that a little bit, just pull it back in and stay on topic. It's like people are looking for specialists, not generalists. So always just remember that if you maybe find yourself, a lot of bloggers in the beginning or if they're struggling, they start to wander and they think maybe this will work. No, stick to your, stick to your niche. They want specialists, you know, throughout life, not generalists. So maybe work that niche in, you go off niche, you go off topic, you talk a little about traveling, how it's interesting, and then you work it into your post. And that, your niche rather. And for me, it'd be blogging tips. So it's just going to be blogging tips 99% of the time, no matter if I go off off niche a little bit. Bring it back in, tie it in, and you'll be fine. Oh, yeah, definitely. We're all, we all want a specialist. We all want a specialist because we're all weird, Ryan. We're all weird. <laughs> we are. Oh, man. Uh, we are. I... I think we all are, and, and that's that's the beauty of it. And when we, we embrace it, that's where, it, again, I talk about these magical things happening, but when you have the clarity on that and be like, hey, I'm this way, I'm letting my personality shine through, um, that's it. And you all have your, we all have our little niche, and we follow that passion, and we tie it to a problem, and we become specialists, and we just stay on topic and learn it inside out and enjoy it and spread the word in that area. And what is the best way, Ryan, for the audience to get in touch with you? Sure thing. My website is bloggingfromparadise.com. You'll get 
the blog posts there, the eBooks, the audiobooks on iTunes, all my courses, my services, you know, coaching, consulting. So you could get all of it through bloggingfromparadise.com. Right. Cool. Bloggingfromparadise.com. Well, Ryan, it was very nice to have you on the show. I oh, really appreciate it, Adrian. Thanks so much for having me. It was a blast. Thanks a lot. And remember, if you haven't subscribed already, click on the subscribe button below and press the bell notification right next to it for the latest uploads. How cool is that?